Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to JFD Traders Tea Time with me, Dario Sunchauskas. Today is the 4th of May 2020. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Monday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, uh, a few of the technical pictures on the charts. So yeah, uh, as always, before we uh, jump, in, jump into that, um, we'll quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. There's always a few seconds for you to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, uh, just before we jump in as well, a quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel, um, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we update on a daily basis as well. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com um, and click on the research tab right there on the top. So it will take you to this page, as I said which we update on a daily basis, and I believe you can find something useful here. So, um, now then, a uh, quick update on what's happening here globally in terms of the coronavirus. Now, <clears throat> that was the figure from this morning. Uh, let's have a look what's happening there. So, um, yeah, the number, number continues to rise. Uh, well, I mean, that's understandable right now. Um, however, of course, hopefully it's going to start slowing down as Europe is starting to show good results. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now then, uh, jumping into a few charts, now quick update here on the DAX, not much action happening here. Um, I talked about this morning uh, about this index and basically what I was, what I was saying that uh, what we'll get is a nice opening gap here to the downside. So, yep. Uh, but what I was also saying that to keep an eye on the 21 day EMA here, because as you can see previously in around mid April, it acted as a good area of support from which the index reversed and pushed higher. So and that's why for now we will remain uh, neutral probably as long as it stays in this little territory here we will stay neutral if it pushes back above this 10,820 zone which is the high of the 14th of April then we could start considering higher levels because still for us to get more comfortable with higher levels we need to see a push above this 12,235 36 zone which is the current highest which is well, not the current but the is the highest point of April so um, and, and then, yes, we could aim for further uh, for a further move higher. So, but for now, uh, if this by any chance pushes back above this 10,820 zone, this could increase the chances of a for DAX to kind of move higher. Um, but if it starts dropping below this 10,280 uh, zone, which is the lowest point of 2018, then, well, I mean, a deeper extension to the downside could be possible, especially if the price falls below that psychological 10,000 zone. Uh, the S&P 500, now, looking at the picture here, um, uh, to be honest, I mean, we will also see a small uh, gap to the downside. However, it's not going to be significant because the current, currently the price on the cash index is balancing at around 2,813 mark. So it closed at around 2,830. Um, so it's just going to be a little small gap here to the downside. So not, not nothing major. Uh, also, the same thing as with DAX, uh, we'll keep an eye on the 21-day EMA because the price is still balancing above it. So the big question here is, can this, uh, can this push back up here? Um, of course, uh, we will uh, be very careful for now because don't get me wrong. I mean, we are at a tricky spot. It could, uh, it could reverse and push higher. If it starts pushing back above the 2,880 zone right here, then we will start considering higher levels. However, uh, preferably, we would like to see a push above the uh, high of, of April, which is around the 2,000. 955 territory because um, at the same 
same time, if we get a push above this barrier, we would also get a push above the 200 EMA on the daily chart. So maybe more buyers could see this as a good opportunity to step in. So if this reverse, as I said, once again, if it, this reverses back above the 2880 zone, yes, we will, uh, or should I say the bulls will get a little bit, more, could get a little bit more excited. Um, and however, if we get a push above the 2955, now this is where it could become even more interesting for the buyer. So keep your eyes on this one. This would confirm a forthcoming higher high. It would push above the yep above the high of April and push above the two. Uh, it would push the price above the 200 EMA uh, here on the daily chart. So in terms of the downside, we need to see a drop below the 2,729 zone in order to aim for lower levels. So for now, uh, we will remain somewhat neutral. Uh, silver, <clears throat> I haven't looked at this one for quite, well, I looked at this one last week, but basically it's still the same idea remains. I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because, again, we're waiting for a breakthrough one of these highlighted areas of ours uh, before we could consider a further directional move. For now, it's stuck here, it's stuck above the 1450, 14.50 zone and stuck below the 15.44 territory. So, yep, uh, we'll, for now, we're, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this one. Um, it's, it could be quite interesting but we need that confirmation break <clears throat> now ripple uh, Ripple is declining as well, so I've talked about this morning about Ethereum, uh, which was on a down move, but um, yep, uh, Ripple was no exception, it was also drifting lower. Um, it ended up almost testing this territory and actually just fell shy from a few points of reaching the high of uh, 7th of April, which is around the uh, 0 0.2052-53 zone. And uh, what I talked about last week, what I was saying that uh, after we got this break here to the upside, um, what I was saying that in a way it could drift, a little, uh, could drift back down, but as long as it stays above this 0 0.2053 to 52 territory, uh, this could still kind of uh, push, uh, or should I say, this could still attract uh, buyers into the game. Um, for, but for those who are more on the cautious side, you could just wait for a push above the 200 day EMA because as you can see, it acts as a good area of resistance for now. Um, also, al although we did have a few overshoots here, Still, as you can see, neither of the daily candles managed to uh, close above it. So that's why if we would get a nice daily close above this 200-day EMA, then, well, higher levels could be met. For now, uh, we are stuck a little bit here. Um, it's neither moving lower nor kind of moving higher. So for now, it's kind of a little bit just ranging here. Uh, so that's why we will wait for a push above this 200 day EMA. Ideally, we would prefer to see a daily close above this 200 day EMA before considering higher levels. And in terms of the downside, now, if we get a nice drop in a good daily close below the 0 0.2052 territory, then yes, uh, this would also place the price below the 21 day EMA here on the daily chart. And uh, maybe more sellers could see this as a good opportunity to drive this one lower. However, we will only target the 0 0.1760 territory first, because as you can see, it acted as a very good area of support here back in around mid-April so we'll aim for that only but again only if we get a nice good daily close below the 0 0.2052 territory. Now then um, something that I haven't looked at for quite a while and uh, basically I just wanted to touch on a few of these exotic pairs. Now um, for some of you maybe it's exotic for some of you uh, you actually look at these maybe uh, occasionally so or maybe you can actually trade them uh, oftenly. So uh, of course, the, these are the, uh, the emerging market currencies. Uh, so here I've got the US dollar against the Mexican peso. Um, and uh, basically the technical pictures look quite interesting here. And this, these are daily charts. Now, um, here you can see that after we had this nice strong rally here in the, uh, at the end of February, it's basically when the stock, the equity market started uh, collapsing heavily. Uh, the emerging market currencies started, um, well, devaluating strongly as well, and especially against the US dollar, which was seen uh, as somewhat of a safe haven. Um, and uh, now you can see that, yes, we are now stalling a little bit here. The, mm, the this pair, for for example, in particular, for now, from the technical side, is kind of forming a possible kind of triangle here. However, to be honest, we're not going to, well, I'm, I'll draw this in, in any way, but uh, still probably the main focus would be more on a maybe possible range. Um, however, we can keep that in the chart for now. I mean, let's see if this actually works out, because if, if, 
if it does work out as a nice uh, triangle here, so basically that means that the pair right now is coiling up and could be preparing for a nice explosion, uh, explosion here to the upside or maybe a, a sharp fall to the downside. But Let's not forget that um, basically the uh, given that all these emerging market currencies are, are heavily reliant on commodity prices, and if by any chance commodity prices start recovering, especially like oil, um, then well, I mean we could see uh, their currencies strengthening. So that's why for now I just want to run this by you guys just for you to kind of keep an eye on this because this could be quite interesting and uh, and I do have some other instruments here as well I'll show you right now um, but uh, looking at this US dollar against Mexican peso uh, it could be quite interesting here as well especially to wait for a clear uh, exit through from this kind of little pattern here um, the levels for you to keep an eye on could be, uh, let's say on the upside, could be this one here, the 25.45 territory, roughly around here, marked by the high of the 24th of March, or in other words, the highest point of March. Um, and on the downside, uh, we could start looking at lower levels if we get a drop below the low of uh, last week, uh, which is the around the 23.65. 465 zone with let's round it up a little bit um, and if we do get a drop below this then well I mean don't get me wrong it, it's not that it doesn't mean that it's gonna start drifting all the way here back down um, initially we'll go slowly step by step because still the risks uh, for the emerging markets remain uh, on the upside on the higher side so that's why we'll be very careful if we get a break here through the lower side of this little pattern uh, and a drop below the uh, 23.65 territory then yes uh, we could could consider some lower levels here um, but again be very careful uh, be very cautious and uh, we'll see we'll go step by step on this one now US dollar against the Russian ruble I talked about this one on Friday and uh, basically what I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this little pattern here which could potentially end up being a nice descending triangle now ac according to all the textbook analysis you know you understand that uh, these kind of patterns tend to break to the downside however uh, uh, we're, we're not going to rush into uh, any decision yet because we have seen this breaking several times in the, uh, well, against the old rules and breaking through the uh, upper side of this triangle and pushing higher. So that's why for now yes we can see that the upper side of the uh let's yeah let's take it right now as a triangle the upper side of the triangle is kind of uh holding the the rate from moving higher and today we're seeing a bit of a correction here however to get comfortable with lower levels we would still need to see a drop below this key area of support um near the 77.63 territory and then we could consider deeper extensions to the downside for now uh, we'll be very careful as long as it stays in this little area here we will stay neutral um, and, but once we get a break through one of the sides of the pattern then yes we will start examining a, a further directional move um, Euro against the uh, South African Rand so here the situation is quite interesting as well um, here we can see that it's maybe it's not a, a symmetrical uh, or not a symmetrical but in general it's not a, tri a triangle the pair is not coiling up is just ranging so it, as you can see today it tried to push higher but found very good resistance near this uh, the highest point of April near the 20 point uh, 9160 territory so uh, it found resistance here and then started drifting back down so in other words it's kind of forming a very nice very beautiful uh, range here right now especially uh, visible here on the daily chart let me just adjust this very quickly there we go and uh, let me just quickly mark the lower side of this of this pattern of this pattern, uh, possible range um, uh, which is roughly around the 19.40 or in a way we could round it up towards the 50 zone so 19.50 so we're stuck here uh, between these two um, between these two areas so for now basically uh, we will probably wait and uh, we'll continue monitoring the price action here inside this pattern but uh, in order to aim for a, a further, let's say, some sort of a further uh, directional move, um, a break of one of these uh, one of these highlighted areas would be needed. So, looking at our oscillators, you can see on uh, the RSI and the MACD, we can see that uh, right now um, we are seeing a bit of a well. 
a negative divergence here as you can see our oscillators are now declining or losing momentum um, and uh, well I mean but the price is kind of still sh shifting uh, sideways here a little bit so that's why for now we'll remain neutral we'll continue observing these two highlighted areas but uh, once it starts getting out of this uh, this little range this is when it could become very interesting um, AUD and ZD so two heavily commodity linked currencies so the battle of the two uh, yep, two commodity currencies. Um, here, I have looked at this one last week and I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on the short-term upside support line taken from the low of the eight, uh, 18th of March. Um, you can see that the pair drifted lower. This is what I was talking about last week. So we saw a slide. Um, so yep, that's wonderful. That's Good, it was good news for the bears. However, uh, what I was saying as well that uh, first of all to keep an eye on this barrier here, the 1.0625 uh, territory, which we've uh, which the pair comfortably broke into the downside. Um, however. What I was also saying that if this gets broken, then we could see the pair moving towards closer to towards this upside support line. Now, uh, it didn't quite reach this upside support line. It started reversing earlier. However, the big question here today is will this pair be able to remain above this 1.0625 zone because if it fails to do so maybe we could see another decline here maybe we could see another slide and maybe this time we could see a test of this upside line and uh, then a strong reversal to the upside um, however if it stays above this 1.0625 zone then well we'll we'll aim for the upside again uh, we'll aim for these levels initially we'll target the uh, the 1.0708 territory which is the high which is the low of the 4th of November. As you can see, it acted as a good area of resistance recently here. So, uh, or should I say last week. And uh, oh, yep, and then we'll take it from there. For now, that's the situation. But the main question here today is, can it stay above the 1.0625 zone? If it cannot, then we could see maybe a possible test of this upside support line. And for us to, let's say, start considering lower levels, we would like to see, we'll, we'll start looking at uh, the downside from here, from uh, from 1.0532 zone, roughly around there. Um, but just to get a little bit more excited and comfortable with lower levels, a drop below this barrier here, the low of the 21st of April, which is around the 1.0484 zone, could do the trick for more sellers because this would also place the rate below the 200 EMA on the daily chart. Uh, USDJPY, I talked about this one this morning, still not much has changed. Uh, I, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because, again, the uh, the idea still remains the same. Yes, overall, we are still below this uh, short-term downside resistance line taken from the high of the 6th of April, um, but we need to see a confirmation break below the low of, of last week, which is around the 106.36 zone. And then we could consider lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming lower low. And uh, yep, uh, some of these lower levels could be met. Uh, with the upside, we need to see a break of this downside line first. And then maybe uh, ideally we would prefer to see a push above the 108.08 level uh, in order to kind of aim for higher levels. Uh, GBP, JPY, uh, so this one is a very interesting and very, very tricky. So uh, last week I talked about this area here, uh, this key area of support around the 132.44 zone, uh, roughly around here, uh, because what I was saying that if we get a daily close below this, then yes, further declines are possible. So last week, the pair drifted lower. Um, the pair, uh, it it looked like it might stay below this level, but below this area, but as you can see, the bulls quickly pushed it uh, back above it. And then on, on Thursday, we had a huge explosion here to the upside. However, the pair failed to reach the high of April. It failed to, on the last trading day of, um, the last trading day of uh, if April, it failed to kind of create a new high for the month. And then, yep, as you can see, the pair kind of drifted back south. Um, and today, we are again testing, we're very close to testing this 132.44 zone. So the big the big question here is, will we eventually see a daily close below it? If we do, then yes, uh, deeper extensions to the downside could be possible. Um, but
but if we, if it continues to move here then well we'll probably stick to this idea of a range uh, range range trading here for now so uh yeah guys for now that's that's the situation that's the game plan um however we need to see a clear breakthrough one of these levels in order to kind of aim for a uh, a further move either to the upside or to the downside and finally uh euro usd which i just quickly removed so let me just quickly get this one back into the game um so uh there we go so euro usd um so this one's pushing a little bit lower to be honest not much has changed from this morning it's still trading uh lower um however it's kind of struggling to get to the uh to get lower towards the 21 day ema because this is what i was talking about this morning and what i was saying that in a way we could see a, a, a deeper move lower here however keep your eyes on the 21 day ema because if it provides some support we could see a nice re reversal and a push higher for those who are more on the cautious side just wait for a push above the 1.0990 and then we could aim for higher levels uh, in terms of the downside pretty very conservative approach here 1.0777 that's uh, a break of this territory territory that's what we need in order to aim for lower levels because this would confirm a forthcoming higher uh, sorry a forthcoming lower low um, and then yep uh, the, uh, the pair could drift further south however um, what we need to see here is not only a break we would also like to see the daily candle kind of the body of the daily candle closing below this area below this 1.0777 that's the lowest point of february because as you can see uh we did get these drops here we get these strong overshoots but we don't get a, a close of a uh, of a daily candle so that's why we would like to see uh this one the, the like i said the daily candle staying below the 1.0777 zone but again for now it's um it's big, a bit of a big way move lower here, um, so all eyes right now are on the, on the 21 day EMA, so keep your eyes on that one. Okay guys, I, I hope you found it useful, and I really, really appreciate your time guys, and thank you very much for watching and listening. I really hope you, yep, as I said, find, find, find it useful, um, and uh, if you want to catch my video tomorrow, uh, my Trader's Espresso, six o'clock GMT time or a little bit after that. Uh, I'll have a look at some of these instruments, some new ones, and uh, yep, we'll, we'll take it from there. So I hope you have a beautiful evening, guys, and stay safe. Bye-bye.